If you are interested in hacking, you might have heard of Kali Linux, the most popular operating system for hackers and security experts. But what makes Linux so special for hacking? Kali Linux is not your ordinary Linux OS. It has over 600 tools that are pre-installed and ready to use for various hacking tasks, such as information gathering, vulnerability scanning, wireless hacking, web hacking, password cracking, exploitation, and more. It also has a customizable and user-friendly interface that lets you tweak and optimize your hacking environment. You can install it as your main OS, dual boot it with another OS, run it from a live USB or DVD, or use it as a virtual machine. For this video, I'm going to use the virtual machine method because it's the easiest and safest way to use Kali Linux. A virtual machine is a software that simulates a computer system and it runs inside your main OS. A virtual machine has many benefits, such as it lets you practice hacking without affecting any real systems or breaking any laws. It protects you from malware and attacks because it isolates your hacking activities from your main OS and it prevents any infections or intrusions from harming your actual system. It also gives you freedom and flexibility. A virtual machine lets you experiment and learn without fear of messing up your system. You can also create multiple virtual machines with different configurations and settings and switch between them easily. To create a virtual machine, you need a virtualization software, such as VirtualBox or VMware. These are free and easy to use programs that let you create and manage virtual machines. For this video, I'm going to use VirtualBox. To install VirtualBox, you need to download it from the official website and follow the installation instructions. To install Kali Linux on VirtualBox, you need to download the Kali Linux image for VirtualBox from the official website and extract the file. Then you need to import the file into VirtualBox and create a new virtual machine. You can adjust the settings of the virtual machine, such as the memory, disk space, and network, according to your needs. Once you have created the virtual machine, you can start it and run Kali Linux. You will be asked to enter the username and password, which are both Kali by default. You will then see the Kali Linux desktop. To use the tools that come with Kali Linux, you can either launch them from the menu, which is organized by categories, or run them from the terminal which gives you more options and flexibility. You can also install additional tools from the Kali Linux repositories or from other sources using the apt package manager. To update your Kali Linux system and tools, you can use the apt update and apt upgrade commands. Another important thing that you need to do when using Kali Linux is to change the password. The default password of Kali is well known and easy to guess, and it can compromise your security and privacy. To change the password, you need to use the password command in the terminal and enter the new password twice. This will change the password and make your system more secure. Now let me show you how to use some of these tools in a practical example. Let's say you want to hack a website that is running on a server with an IP address of 192.1681.100. Here are the steps that you can follow to achieve this goal. First, you need to gather some information about the target. You can use nmap to scan the target and find out the open ports and services. You can also use nicto to scan the target for web vulnerabilities. Or amass to find out the subdomains and DNS records of the target. Then, you need to analyze the vulnerabilities that you found. You can use sqlmap to test and exploit SQL injection vulnerabilities. Or use nmap to test and exploit other vulnerabilities, such as buffer overflow, remote code execution. Third, you need to exploit the vulnerabilities that you found. You can use Metasploit Framework to run the exploits and get a shell on the target. Or Armitage to manage and automate the exploits. Fourth, you need to perform forensic analysis on the target. You can use Autopsy to recover and analyze the files and data on the target. Or Hashcat to crack the passwords and hashes on the target. Fifth, you need to generate reports and documentation of your findings and actions. You can use Dratus to create and share the reports with your team. Or use Metagoofle to extract and analyze the metadata of the files on the target. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. I'll leave links below to resources that explain each tool in Kali Linux and what each one does. Other than that, stay safe.